Hi ladies, welcome to week two. I hope you are enjoying our study on the fruit of the spirit and getting some quality time to journal your way through it. I went ahead and looked at some of the highlights of the book, the scripture, and I looked back at some of my journaling that just complemented it some, so well and I can't wait to share it with you. I hope you don't mind, but it's what we're all doing together, right? Creative journaling. and. I'd love your feedback about sharing journaling. Love most of all to see your journaling because when we share our journaling, it inspires one another. We all grab different um, highlights from the Bible, from our study, our time in it, depending on what season we're in and what's going on in our lives, different scripture speaks to us. And it is so refreshing to hear this word that is so alive and how it spoke to each of us. It's just a testament to God's Word and how it can speak to us differently in each season of our life, our maturity uh, as Christians, and He feeds us just what we need to hear. So anyway, this week, uh, the highlights in the book for me, I loved the comment that we are innately sinful and incapable of living out our purity on our own. I'll take that back. I didn't really love that verse, but it is kind of focuses you on the truth of what Jesus did for us and what walking by the Spirit uh, means to us, for us, in our sinful nature. Uh, nothing good exists in me apart from the Holy Spirit. Without that, I'd just be giving in to my fleshly desires, right? We are blameless in Christ, but should not abuse that freedom by continuing in sinful patterns. My responsibility is fleshly urges should be overridden by actively walking in obedience to the Holy Spirit. I'm supposed to be bearing some fruit like self-control against temptations. And the Galatian church leaders were requiring abidance in the law rather than in Christ. But Christ is better than the law. We need to abide in him rather than in the law. So rather than rules and regulations and traditions that cannot save us, we need to look to Christ for our salvation and abide in him. So with that, um, I did a lot of reflecting that the Holy Spirit, who is the Holy Spirit? It's my helper, my counselor. He enables me to walk in Jesus name work in Jesus name the Holy Spirit is strong enough great enough sufficient enough to make me a wretched sinner holy and righteous through his blood so with that I'd love to share my journaling with you and I would love to see your journaling hear your process and how you walked out any bit of our study materials this week um, that's especially great to share one another, inspires and points to what God is actively doing in our lives because we are pers pursuing him and his word. So let's take a look at the journal. Our focus this week was on Galatians 5, 16 through 18, which reads, So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you're not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Our flesh is self-focused. When we are focused on things our flesh desires, the things of this world, our worldview becomes skewed. We lose our discernment for spiritual things. And we're prone to wander from the truth and we are easily led astray. But walking through the Spirit protects us from those who distort truth. I did a journaling through the word truth in the Bible and this particular journaling entry Paul was speaking to the elders in the church of Ephesus just before leaving them. It was his last visit with them, and he warned them, keep watch over yourselves and all of the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Be shepherds of the church of God, which he bought with his own blood. I know that after I leave, savage wolves will come in among you and will not spare the flock. Even from your own number, men will arise and distort the truth in order to draw away disciples after them. So be on your guard. Remember that for three years, I never stopped warning each of you night and day with tears. 
And I did some more tracing when I got to 1 Timothy chapter 6. It's Paul's warning. And he tells us that walking by the Spirit means we are good students of God's Word. The Spirit helps us understand and obey God's Word. And we're not getting wrapped up in controversies and quarrels that result in envy, strife, malicious talk, evil suspicions, and constant friction. Instead, when we weigh in on politics, vaccines, immigration, or whatever the issue might be, we reflect Christ as we show love, peace, joy, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control because we are walking with the Spirit. When journaling the word enough, I came to 2 Corinthians 11, and Paul was voicing concern because the believers were not grounding themselves in truth, in the word, and walking by the Spirit. And he was concerned that if someone came along and preached a Jesus other than the one that he preached, or a different spirit, they were gullible. They put up with it easily enough. And John 3.19 makes the point that some people simply choose not to walk with the Spirit. They prefer their flesh. He says this is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. And if you've ever knowingly dabbled in sin, you know what it's like when we surrender to our flesh and turn away from the Spirit. 2 Peter 2 says that those who follow the corrupt desire of the flesh and despise authority appealing to the lustful desires of the flesh. They entice people who are just escaping from those who live in error. They promise them freedom while they themselves are slaves of depravity. For people are slaves to whatever has mastered them. If they have escaped the corruption of the world by knowing Jesus and are again entangled in it and are overcome, they are worse off at the end than they were at the beginning. It would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than to have known it and then turn their backs on the sacred command that was passed on to them. Peter goes on to compare them to a dog who returns to its vomit and a pig that returns to wallowing in the mud after a bath. And Hebrews 5 talks about the condition of Christians who refuse to grow in their walk with the Spirit. I traced a baby drinking milk from a bottle to illustrate verses 11 through 14, which say we have much to say about this, meaning the gospel, but it's hard to make it clear to you because you no longer try to understand. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk, still being an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. So when we accept Jesus as our Lord, it begins a process of transformation. Like a baby, we should be growing and developing and bearing more and more fruit as evidence that we're walking with the Spirit. And that transformation is not external. It's not an ornament. It's not something we do. It's our character. It's something that's changing internally. We have died to sin and lead a new life in Jesus Christ. Titus 2, 11 through 14 tells us that the grace of God teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age while we wait for Jesus. Who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good? Isaiah 48, 16 through 18 says, I am the Lord your God who teaches you what is best for you, who directs you in the way you should go. If only you had paid attention to my commands, your peace would have been like a river, your well-being like the waves of the sea. When we are walking in the Holy Spirit, we are attuned to the direction of God, our Creator, who knows what is best for us. In the Lord's Prayer, we ask God to lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from the evil one. In my journaling, Jesus is leading us home. He knows our weaknesses. He allows us the freedom to choose how closely we decide to follow him. Do you see the sheep considering drifting over to the tempting flowers or the rocks that might be hiding potential danger? The sheep can't see the lush valley that Jesus is leading them to. I pray that he leads us away from any faith-building trial or temptation that would tempt us to wander into the trap set by the enemy. James 1, 
13 and through 14 says, when tempted, no one should say God is tempting me for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. And then 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, no temptation is overtaking you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. So when we're walking by the Spirit, he helps us overcome our flesh. Then we hold to Jesus' teachings and we really are his disciples. Then we know the truth and the truth sets us free. Commitment, conviction brings freedom, peace, and confidence. There's no agonizing about whether or not we should do something. We have decided who we will follow. So to wrap up my study this week, our study together this week, I did this entry. We have been forewarned. Our flesh desires what's contrary to what God desires. There will be temptations and conflicts. And knowing that, how will we prepare How will we know that we can end those conflicts swiftly? How will we be good disciples? Praise God, we don't have to do it alone. Jesus has gifted us the Spirit to live within us. And Jude 24, 25 says, To him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy, To the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. Well, that was a lot of journaling to share, and I didn't complete it all this week, obviously. But because I had spent time in the scripture before and took the time to really consider it and journal it, I gained a better understanding that helped me with this week's scripture in Galatians 5. So I added the new entries and considered all the verses, the homework, the heart work that we did, and it caused me to examine my walk as a Christian, taking that time and really sitting in it and working through it slowly. I think it helped me love better this week. I was more patient, kinder, more joyful, and basically I think I was bearing more fruit, fruit of the Spirit as the Spirit led me in the Scripture. And I hope you found the same experience in your walk this week. I would love to hear if the journaling made a difference and how slowing down and doing the Scripture at this speed worked for you this week. So God bless you and we will see you next week.